Good morning. Welcome to Messiah United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are here today. If you are in the sanctuary, we're glad that you're here today. If you're joining us on our live stream, we're glad if you are watching this at a different time later in the week. Yes, Mark, I'm going to get to that. Mark is rushing things. All right, so I'm going to make the chicken barbecue last here. Uh, Daylene wants me to say thank you to everyone who contributed to the fall festival. I understand it was a wonderful time, and we thank Daylene. But there are lots of other people that chipped in with desserts and helping in different ways. The youth group helped with the kids. So thank you to everyone who participated, and I uh, hope everyone had a good time. Uh, we have coming up our blood drive and our chicken barbecue. So make sure that you have your tickets and you satisfy Mark and all the things that he needs from you. We're going to buy plenty of chicken this time, so hopefully we will not run out. Uh, the blood drive is run by Nancy, so you can see her. Or you can sign up with the Red Cross. Coming up in November, the first Sunday in November, we will celebrate All Saints Sunday. So if uh, we know who we've lost in our congregation, but you can remind us. If you've lost people in your family, if people have passed away in the last year, we want to remember them in the service. So you can fill out that form or you can email Mary or I and let us know who we should include in that All Saints Sunday. We also invite you if you'd like to bring pictures. So we'll put pictures on the altar of the saints we've lost in the last year. So you can bring that and participate. We will be lighting candles again in the service for each of those persons. Our Wednesday evening Bible study is going really well. We're having wonderful conversations, but we're always glad to have other people join us. So if you'd like to come on this Wednesday or the coming Wednesdays in the fall, uh, we are going through the Old Testament and reading and enjoying and talking together. So you're welcome to join us. Let us continue our worship with our call to worship as Nancy comes forward and we rise to worship together. Please rise if you were able. As the rains pour from heaven, soaking the earth, that it may produce good things. We have been blessed with many gifts and talents. Come, let us worship and celebrate the mighty love and power of God. You may remain standing and join us in our first hymn, number 433, All Who Love and Serve Your City.
seated. Please come to an attitude of prayer as we share together our opening prayer. Lord, everywhere we look, we see the imprint of your creative love. The wondrous works of nature show your majesty. Towns and cities show your blessing upon human endeavors to build community and work together in creative endeavors. As we gather today to celebrate your love and creation, keep us mindful that we are part of that creative order. We're meant to be stewards and not destroyers. Prepare us to work for you in ministries of peace and justice and send your spirit upon us as we pray. reading this morning is from the sixth chapter of Micah, verses 1 through 8. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, lead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and your enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised. But Balaam, son of Beor, answered him, And what happened from the Shittim to Gilak, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord? With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with the thousands of rams? With ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? The fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh mortal, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Here is the reading of the first reading of the day. Let us God bless this message to our hearts. Will the children come forward for the children's message? Good morning. Come on up. All right. Come on up, Lena. You guys seem far away. Here, I'll come a little closer to you. All right. Welcome. Is your brother here today? Just you? All right. Glad to see you. All right. 
Come on up. What? Yeah. All right. Are you two? You have a donut on your shirt. Yeah. All right. You're number two. Where's number one? Sitting over there. All right. I'm glad to see you guys. Today's scripture from Micah talks about the word kindness. What is kindness? Okay, I'm going to ask Lena and can come back to you. Yeah. To be really, really nice to people. Connor, did you want to add something? You can help them when they get hurt. That's a great example. Colton? You can help them. That's great. Those are all good things. Yeah. So kindness is to be nice to people, to help people when they get hurt, to help people. That's good examples of kindness. So Jesus, or no, this is, this is Micah, the prophet, says that kindness is an important part of our faith. So being kind to each other is something we do all the time. We have lots and lots of opportunities. What kind of people can we be kind to? Who could we be kind to in our lives? Yes? Now what am I going to ask next? You just said everyone. <laughs> Done. Can you be, can you be a little more specifics? Who wants to say someone else? Friends. Yep. Your family. Right? All right, what about at school? Can you be kind to, to new people you meet at school? Yeah, okay. Strangers. You can even be kind to strangers. In fact, you can be kind to everyone. <laughs> All right, let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for telling us what is good, that we would be kind. Help us to be kind to friends and family and people in school and even strangers. Amen. Thank Thanks for coming. Our gospel reading is from Luke chapter 4. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread throughout the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He enrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Thanks be to God for the reading of this word. You may be seated. I enjoy listening to Amy talk about conversations she has with her elementary school students. It's in that category of, you know, kids say the darndest things. As a public school teacher, she doesn't bring up faith, God, Jesus, religion, those kind of things. But her kids are free to say whatever the kids say. So occasionally she tells me a story and I have to say, well, I'm going to preach on that one. She told me the other day she was um, working with a child and the child took a, a pencil and sharpened the pencil with the pencil sharpener. 
And she said, well, now we need to empty out the shavings out of the pencil sharpener. And she said, well, that's okay. There's not that many, and, and the next person will get it. And she said, no, I'm church. And he said, oh, what does that mean? She said, that means I'm nice. Which meant to her, she needed to take care of the pencil shavings because that was her job. When you do something, you have to pick up after yourself. She had that in mind, and the way she said that was, I am church. There you go. Lessons from a third grader. What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? What does it mean to be a Christian? To do the right thing. To not leave the work behind you, to clean up the mess behind you, not to leave it behind for the next person. Maybe that's one way of saying it. Today, two well-known passages lay out God's call to each one of us. Luke's statement of purpose when he was in the synagogue, the scroll was laid before him and he went straight, well, he went, went to chapter 61, so he had to roll the scroll all the way to the back when he was presented with Isaiah to read from chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And in Micah, the narrative says clearly, what does the Lord require of you? And the prophet lays out just what God requires, condensing it into one small verse, but bring together so much of the tradition. If you were asked today, what is your personal mission statement? What is your purpose? Would you have one in mind? It's somewhat trendy in business and in leadership development and also in the church to have mission and vision statements and to write these for a church or a business. But in some uh, leadership, people are encouraged to think for ourselves and have a statement of purpose or mission statement. These Bible verses would be a good place to start. You could pick others, but each one of these would be a good place to start. The Micah reading comes as an accusation. It starts as an accusation. And basically the gist of it is, I am your God, and I did all these things from you, from creating you to bring you out of slavery in Egypt, and you have turned your back on me. The prophet, speaking for God, condemns, accuses the people. And the voice of the people says, what should we do for the Lord? Should we present burnt offerings? This was the way that the people in, in, in Old Testament times would atone for their sins, to present offerings at the temple. There was a ritual way to do this. Shall I present burnt offerings, a calf, a year old, a thousands of rams, ten thousands rivers of oil? How much? Recognizing the people's sin is so great, how much of an offering would be enough? But the prophet says that's not what's important. That's what, not what's important. Prophet says, You have been told, O Israel, what is good, and what the God, the Lord, requires from you to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. There's a tradition in the Old Testament of sacrifice and ritual, but there is also a tradition that says those things are only so good. What really matters is the ethical way you live each and every day in your life to do justice to love kindness and walk humbly with your God. I'm reminded of the word humility or humbly comes from the word hummus, the earth. The Hebrew is something different, but the, the translation humility both have in common being close to the earth. When we say a person is salt of the earth or you know, a person of, of you know, close to the ground, that gets to the sense of what's meant by humble. You know, doesn't get too big for themselves. Stays close to what's most important, the regular things of life. To be humble is to attend to the little details, perhaps like emptying the pencil uh, sharpener or doing the little things that make a difference in the lives of the people around us. To be humble is part of our faith. Jesus, at the beginning of his ministry and at his hometown synagogue, stands up in worship in front of everyone. Now, apparently he was preaching. This, the, scripture, the passage says that he was preaching all around Galilee. And he was, the people were pleased with him. And he stood up, as was his custom in the synagogue of that time, 
one of the men would stand up and read from their scripture, which would have been the Torah and the prophets and the Psalms and the, the, the writings. And he stands up reading from Isaiah and he says, reads from the prophet. The prophet says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. But at the end, he puts it down and he says, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And it's implying that he, the spirit of the Lord, is upon him. Now, any of us could claim that the spirit of the Lord is upon us. The prophets certainly would say that the spirit of the Lord was upon them to speak for God. But Jesus in saying, today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing is claiming that he is in some ways heir to fulfilling the promise of Isaiah that the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. To do what? What is the content of the passage? The passage says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. The Spirit anoints to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Good news to the poor. Our faith, our calling should always be good news to the poor. And recognize the poor, the captives, the blind, the oppressed. All these are people who are struggling in different ways to get a fair shake, to get justice. Our faith, our actions, our everyday life should be good news to those who are struggling. We should recognize around us people who need a witness from God, a word from God, a hand, who need a fair uh, alignment of things. We should witness that God is always working to make things right, to make things just between people, between families, in our society. Good news. We are called to be good news to the people and the society and the world around us. I want to share a little bit. We went yesterday to a family funeral. I was sorry to miss the um, fall festival and not to be there. I always enjoy being there. But we went to a uh, funeral for a cousin of mine who died of breast cancer. She was my sister's age. She was uh, 36, no, 46 when she died. We grew up together. Her name was Suzanne, and we grew up together. We had summer vacations together. Uh, her, her dad was my dad's cousin, which I think makes me a second cousin, but I never quite understood. Um, I don't think we're removed because we're on the same generation. Is that right? Okay. So she was the, the daughter of my dad's cousin. So we were second cousins. And uh, uh, we went to Uncle Charlie and Aunt Margie's place. Uh, my dad's aunt and uncle had a place in Buzzards Bay, which if uh, Cape Cod is like an arm, Buzzards Bay is the armpit. But it's a beautiful place. Don't let that you know, mistake you. It's, it's like Cape Cod, right? So they had a place there, and they had a house in town, and they had a cottage uh, on the bay, and we went there, and the cottage was for uh, people to stay, family members to stay. So we would see Suzanne there sometimes. We would see them at Thanksgiving when we got together with my father's family for Thanksgiving. And she was my little cousin. She was my sister's age. And I didn't have a lot to do with her as an older whatever in the family. But growing up, she was always, her personality was like, you know, one to ten, she was an eleven. You know, she was, you could tell it when she was young, she was, she was pretty and she was going to be very beautiful. And she just had the outside, she was always singing. She took piano lessons, she took uh, dance. She, uh, later in life, she became an actress. But you could tell she was always going to. She grew up in Middletown, New York, which is in New York State, uh, just maybe an hour from New York City. And even as a teenager, she said, I'm gonna grow up and I'm gonna go to the city. I'm gonna go to the city, I'm gonna be an actress. Well, guess what? She did. She starred in one of her high school plays, and she was good. And uh, uh, apparently the drama director, I learned more of this at the funeral than I knew uh, at the time beforehand, but the, the director from the high school convinced her parents, who were not all that fond of her 18-year-old jumping into New York City to become an actress, that she actually had the talent. 
to go and do it. And she went. And she studied with uh, uh, Wynne. Um, oh, she, I should have written the name down. Studied with a comic uh, actor who had this workshop. And people spoke of him in such reverence. Um, they were in this acting class with this teacher. And there were pictures of her. And truly, she did grow up to be stunning. I didn't see her at this time in my life. I was doing other things and not connected to family as much. But 26 years old, she contracted breast cancer, and it knocked her off this career. And she moved home, and she went through aggressive treatment, and uh, it was very difficult. But she did go into remission. And she went back to New York City, and she taught children's story time and used all her acting gifts uh, to be in libraries and to work with children, and she did a web series um, online. She grew up in church, but as far as I could tell, as an adult, church wasn't a big part of her life. This web series she did was full of crystals and past lives and spiritual auras and sharing, I think her father would probably say over-sharing about therapy and mental health issues and crises and there's a sexual humor to it, an uncensored kind of playfulness. It was a New York City attitude of fabulous and eccentricity, and it wasn't easy to tell what was her character and what was her, but I'm telling you, we were not at Thanksgiving at uh, a great Grandpa John's uh, household anymore. Amy and I went to the service to remember her and also to see family, my dad's cousins, and my parents met us there. But what I didn't expect was the service would start a half hour late. It was in the uh, auditorium of her middle school, and Chris and I just had conversation. You know, funerals that are not held in churches have different traditions. So it was held in the auditorium of her high school. And as we got there, the doors were closed, and her friends were preparing the service for us. And then the doors opened, we were invited to come sit on the stage where she had acted in high school, and her friends from high school and from New York City put together a program, I swear, it was a bulletin like this, and it was in like eight point, and it had listed about 30 people who were presenting. And the Presbyterian minister was like number 25 out of 30 with a spiritual reflection, you know, next to the, the tin whistle and the um, reflections and the video collages and the recordings that the kids she babysat made of piano music they'd done for her, and everything that they were going to perform as a tribute to Suzanne. It was wonderful to see this eclectic community, but I did feel a little bit out of my element. It was wonderful to see that she found the community that she had gone looking for and touching to see how her friends embraced her parents and her family, especially her dad, who was not extravagant, not particularly creative or musical, and was just loved, loved by all these friends. The tributes to her talked about how nice she was. And one person said, nice sounds trite, but she made it an art, that she made everyone feel like she was loved, she was supportive, to the uh, nth degree of all her artist friends would go and buy art from her friends and, and make declarations of how wonderful this art is so that everybody in the gallery would get sort of a buzz about, oh, well, this must be good because this young woman thinks it's great. It's her friend. <laughs> she loved life, was spontaneous, full of excitement and energy. People talked about when she had breast cancer, how she approached that with humility and with a positive attitude and appreciation of every day. How the whole experience taught her and taught them how precious each day was. As I said, there was a Presbyterian pastor on the uh, program with a spiritual reflection, and I wondered, what can a Christian preacher say to this bunch of people? None of them seemed very religious at all. What would I say if I were in her place? What would our faith have to say to these people? who were full of life, but not particularly religious. The pastor read from Ecclesiastes 3, for everything there is a season. It's a beautiful passage for a funeral service. And she talked particularly about humility. 
and delight. How Suzanne approached life with humility, especially after her sickness. But delight in every single moment. And for every season, there's a time for every season. And how a funeral service is a time to reflect on the time that we have, the life we have, and what to do with it. The preacher's humility and generosity and kindness to that crew of people and to all of us, the family that were listening, was palpable. It made me think of this Micah passage that I would be preaching today to do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with your God. These passages from Scripture make us think about our purpose as a church. What do we have to offer the community around us, especially as our world becomes less and less religious, as each generation goes and finds its own passion and calling, but may go further and further from the church? How do we speak a word of kindness in humility, but a good word that lifts people up and shows people love and grace and might call people to an understanding of God. These passages call us to act with justice, and so we think about our ministries with Colonial Neighborhood Council, with the refugees we support, with Redbird Mission and the Christmas Challenge. It makes us think of justice issues that we're confronting in our world. But more and more, these passages reflect on the challenge to just be in our world and in our lives. How do we live? How do we treat the people around us? How do we live each day that's given us? How do we deal with joys, but also the sorrows of our lives? We should be good news to the people around us, to our family, to our friends, to people at school and work, even sometimes to strangers, especially those who are poor, who are struggling in one way or another. We should be doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly each and every day. That is what God calls us to do. Thanks be to God. Let us join together as our hymn once again asks the question, what gifts can we bring? Let us rise and sing Lord gives us so many blessings. 
And sometimes we don't remember to thank him the way we should, but we can reciprocate by offering him some of our gifts so that he can use them to benefit others and further his kingdom.
love and concern for others and to further your kingdom in heaven and on earth. Amen. You may be seated. Let us go to God in prayer. God, help us each day to do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with you. Help us to love one another and those around us and to be good news. We pray, O oh God, for all who are suffering, for all who are struggling, for those who have lost loved ones, especially for Dave and Suzanne and all the friends, Dave and Anne, the parents and all the friends, the family of Suzanne, for those in our congregation who've lost loved ones, for all of us as we grieve those who we love and see no more, for those who are sick, we pray for all on our prayer list and on our hearts today. Touch us where we need your healing. Speak to us where we need your comfort. Heal our bodies and restore our spirits so that we might know the joy of your salvation. God, we pray for those who are giving care or caring for loved ones who are in difficult situations. God, we pray today for those who do not have what, we, what they need, what we need, for those of us who are poor and do not have food or shelter or safety, for those of us who are under threat of violence or abuse or intimidation or fear, we pray, God, that you would keep us strong and safe and secure. We pray, O oh God, for our world, for a city which endures more violence, for Philadelphia police this week who three officers were shot in a just another day on their job serving a warrant. God, for all in harm's way and all who suffer in our city. God, we pray for all those who need you most. And we pray in our lives when we come before you and say, what, O oh Lord, can we do? Show us our way, O oh Lord, and lift us up so that we might be good. We pray for those who are recovering from hurricanes and flooding, from those who have lost homes and possessions and uh, even loved ones, God. We pray that your church might work with uh, our neighbors in restoring and building up what has been torn down. And we pray that Messiah Methodist Church in this community might have a vision for what you call us to do. We cannot do everything, oh God but show us what peace you might have us take part in, what role you might have us play. God, be our vision. Direct our steps and our actions and our words. We pray for our ministries in the next month, for the chicken barbecue and the blood drive and all the things that we're involved in. God, direct us ever outward to show your love and to share your blessing. We pray all this in Jesus' name as he taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together in singing Stand Up and Bless the Lord. It's number 662 in your red hymnals and on the screen. Stand on the promises of God and bless God and go from this place declaring God's praises and sharing God's blessings in all that you do. Go and God who created us, Christ who redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit that abides with us, be with you each and every day. Amen.